610. So I have to tell you that I uh, I was going to give this book away, but I realized that uh, Mr. Wrightstone signed it for me. So Very nice. I'll have to figure out whether or not uh, Greg <laughs> wants to give another? me another one. But yes. sorry, I didn't even notice that he said, Jamie, arm yourself with the facts. Gregory Wrightstone. I said, okay. That's cool. So That's too cool. I was cool. going to give the book away, but I take it back. I'll, give <laughs> it, I'll get another one. Mr. Wrightstone, thank you so much for being with us. How are you? Good morning. Is it cold out there? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, it is, my friend. It's not uh, It's not warming yet. But wait till the people get their SUVs started on the highway, and I'm sure it'll warm up uh, uh, <laughs> quickly. Hey, by the way, I wanted to ask you, and the book is called Inconvenient Facts, The Science at Al Gore doesn't want you to know. Can I ask you a quick personal question? Is that all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you uh, write the book, and it is in memory of our son, Zachary Daniel Wrightstone, uh, September 1988 to February 2017, last year. Uh, would you mind telling me what, can you tell me what happened, if you don't mind? Or? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm able to talk about it now without, uh, yeah, we, he, he was, uh, it's almost been a year, be a year and two weeks that he he was found dead and um, 28 years old. Uh, we had no idea. Uh, they ran, did an autopsy, did extensive work. Blood work came back. Uh, after nine months, they sent it back for more blood work. Uh, the bottom line is uh, the medical examiner said we can find no reason why this young man died. Wow. So he said, and I've talked to other coroners and uh, um it's extremely, highly unusual. The, the guy that did it, he says, we can always find a cause of death. Right. And they, I, so we don't know why he died. Yeah. Well, I have a son who's just about to turn 28, and so my, I, I feel for you, and I, I definitely understand your pain and appreciate you sharing it with us. I was just curious because I know it was right there in the front of the book, so. Yeah, and then we you, had so. that. Actually, the book, um, I poured myself into writing this book. I think that helped quite a bit. Yes. Uh, and I had, we had our birth of our first granddaughter, so the, the, uh, the acknowledgement page says uh, one life ends and another begins. Well, good so. for you. Well, absolutely. You. That, that, yeah. is, that is so true uh, also. By the way, uh, so Gregory Wrightstone, he's a geologist, 35 years of experience uh, researching and studying various aspects of the Earth's processes, and uh, B.A. Waynesburg University, master's from West Virginia University, uh, both in the field of geology. Uh, and so it's interesting, this issue doesn't go away, which is why right now, even as maybe Al Gore might be somewhere in the annals of history, his claims still remain relevant and are used on a regular basis, not only to try to enact policy, but also just to uh, shame people for their certain behaviors, whether it be what the car they buy or what gasoline they use. So what is the uh, main thrust of, of, of this particular book? I think there are a couple of overarching themes. I think the, the big theme, and it wasn't, well, before we get started, I just want to say, tell your listeners, I did not set out to write a book. I originally started out, I wanted to seek the truth, because I heard things, I, there were a couple of things about climate change that were being told that I knew were incorrect, based on my uh, knowledge as a geologist. There were other things I suspected were incorrect, and as I delved into it, it just, it was shocking that so many things were being told are flat out, 180 degrees different from what the science facts and data tell us, and those are things like decreasing forest fires, decreasing droughts. We're told they're increasing. Um, so, uh, you know, it's been, the book really arose out of that search for the truth. Well, and especially as we saw the fires in L.A., and pretty much any kind of calamity is utilized by the climate change freaker outers uh, to somehow back up their, their claims. And you're saying that a lot of this is really just... Uh, cyclical, correct? And you have 60 inconvenient facts, basically from the government's own sources here. Right. We have 60 inconvenient facts. There are really 60 nails in the climate alarmism's coffin. In fact, there was just a, uh, a recent uh, review of the book with, by that name in American Thinker uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but you were asking about some overarching themes of the book, too. I think the big takeaway from the book and what, what really came out of this is that 
rising temperatures, and they are rising, and increasing CO2, and it is increasing, is really leading to significantly beneficial effects overall for the earth and the human condition. And your listeners have never heard that. Um, we're being told that human increases in CO2 are necessarily leading to dangerous increases in temperature, which then leads to catastrophic uh, climate change that's going to be bad for all of us. Um, but if you look at, at the overall aspects of each one we're talking about, we see a, a greening planet. We see vegetation increasing, not decreasing. We should see uh, more crops being grown based on longer growing seasons and increased CO2 fertilization effect. These are all good things. Uh, rising temperatures and increasing CO2 are leading to our ability to, to feed a, a hungry world, feed the hungry out there, feed the poor. Isn't that a good thing? Well, you're also pointing is. out, too, that increased CO2 levels uh, cause, uh, are causing less intense heat waves. So, so there might be some warmth associated with whatever's changing, but it also has decreased the length of the so-called heat wave. That will take yeah, lives. Yeah, well, a lot of this, a lot of the things we just think, I, like going into it, I thought that forest fires were increasing worldwide. I just did. I, most of your listeners probably do, too. But those and other things are being lessened. A lot of it goes back to an increasing soil moisture content and the increasing soil across the world. NASA's own data, and I've got a beautiful illustration of that in the book from NASA. It shows that 25 to 50 percent of the planet Earth is greening. In other words, vegetation is increasing. Only 4%, according to NOAA, is what they're, they're calling browning, which they call desertification. In other words, uh, vegetation's decreasing. So we have a net benefit. And one of those browning places happens to be in Southern California, one, you know, of the 4% uh, that's, that's experiencing this. Uh, there are selected spots, but for the great percentage of the earth we're experiencing greening and that greening uh is due to both increasing soil moisture uh and co2 fertilization effects so warming temperatures allow more water vapor to be held in the atmosphere which leads to more precipitation and co2 uh, fertilization effect means that the plants aren't breathing in and out as much right well wait a minute mr whitestone then how then okay well how about this how do you explain the increase in tornadoes because they seem to be everywhere ah mr allman you're wrong tornadoes are actually decreasing 2016 i haven't looked at the 2017 data yeah 2016 data ended uh with from noah their own statistics and their chart which i include in my book as 2016 ended with the lowest number of severe tornadoes, that's F3 or more, uh, severe tornadoes uh, since NOAA started taking records of that back in the 50s. Uh, we're seeing decreases in tornadoes, not, not increases. In fact, 2016 was, as you point out, based on the government's own data, we've had the, that's the uh, year where they, we've had the lowest number of tornadoes in history, Correct. Yeah, uh, severe tornadoes. Let's, right. let's make sure that's correct. Yeah. And uh, the reason we want to use severe tornadoes, uh, prior to the, the era of, of satellites, a tornado could have touched down uh, anywhere, and it wouldn't have been recognized. Uh, NOAA estimates, though, that the severe tornadoes are big enough that somebody would have recognized it. So we, can, we can categorize and number those a lot more accurately. So, yeah. 2016, right. lowest number of severe tornadoes since uh, Noah started. All right, uh, then, Mr. All right, Mr. Wrightstone, enough of that gobbledygook. How, tell that to the polar bears as we see them all going away because uh, all the uh, ice is going away. I, uh, yeah, that's uh, actually, I've got a chart in the book that goes back to 1960 that shows we have about four times as many polar bears today as we did in 1960. Granted, uh, part of that increase is due to uh, a, a ban on hunting. That, that surely didn't help. But even since the ban on hunting occurred a couple decades ago, we still see an increase in polar bears. And one of the funniest, I thought, I got to chuckle, uh, one of the funniest studies that was done uh, looked at the Chuchi Sea and the Bering Sea between Russia and, and Alaska there. One had a high ice loss area. The other had very little ice. They funded a study. Well, the assumption was going into it, the high ice loss area, the polar bears should be suffering terribly, right? They found just the opposite. 
those bears were fat and happy. They had larger litters. The, the cubs survived a uh, much higher percentage. The sows were, were uh, extremely fat. And it turns out that although the bears had to move on land to hunt, there were more critters to eat, so they gained a lot of weight. Wow. You and your so, facts, Mr. Wrightstone. Uh, I'll tell you. Pesky things. I know. You know, it's a, it's a great book. It's very highly detailed, people. So it's not one of these, you know, uh, some thumbsucker books. It's got charts. It's got facts. It's got numbers. It's got all kinds of things. So it's very highly scientific, easy to read, but highly scientific. And congratulations on the book. I wish I had the entire three hours to talk to you because I, I, I could. Uh, Let's but, do it again. All right, my friend. The book is called Inconvenient Facts, the Science that Al Gore Doesn't Want You to Know. I guess it's available on Amazon and beyond, correct? Yeah, it is. Or go to my website, inconvenientfacts.xyz. Uh, there's some chapters, selections from the book oh, there, good. Uh, some, some good charts. All right. Well, thank you for the illumination, and our prayers continue uh, for your family and uh, for your loss uh, of, of your son. So uh, hopefully this will be a great year for you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. It's Gregory Wrightstone, the book Inconvenient Facts, the science that Al Gore doesn't want you to know.